So welcome to this webinar. Sorry about that. A slight false start. So uh, yeah, we're, we're DVW Analytics. Um, the purpose of this web webinar is to show you how you can very easily, in a business user-friendly way, connect to your SAP data. Um, DVW, as I said, have been around for six, seven years, and our, our raison d'etre, our reason for being is, is that we bridge the gap between SAP and, and those many analytics and um, presentation um, solutions that you see emerging um, in a straightforward and easy way. Um, as I said, we've well over 400 global customers now um, from all verticals, from pharmaceuticals, retail, um, banking, et cetera, et cetera. You can see some of those folks on there. And the only reason that they're on there is not to show off, but to, but to just say, look, this is a, a product for everybody. The only thing that all these companies have in, problem, in common is that they run SAP and they have a need to push data out to platforms that are more usable for their user base. So when we say SAP, we mean pretty much anything with SAP on the label, okay? You can see the names and the, the systems you would expect here. These are, this is just a, a, a partial list of the, uh, the SAP systems that we support, but the big players, as you can see. So uh, in the top left here, we have obviously all the ERP systems. We can connect to pretty much the full range of ERP systems, as you might expect, um, ECC, yes for hana um, and HANA in Cloud 2, even all the way back to R3, should you have a, a, an old rusty version of that sitting around somewhere. We also can connect to any um, uh, of the analytics space um, solutions from SAP, such as BW, BW on HANA and all versions thereof, also business objects, as you can see there. And then anything on the ABAP stack. So things like the, the what are becoming legacy, the business suite solutions like CRM, SRM, no problem connecting into there, as well as any industry solution you may be running in your organization. Um, as well as all that ABAP stack type systems, we can connect to the newer um, cloud solutions from SAP like uh, C4C, Marketing Cloud, Ariba and Success Factors. And then in the planning space, top right there, you can see there's the, the older business planning consolidation, BPC, and integrated business planning up in the cloud. All of those we can connect to and many, many more. So when we say SAP, pretty much anything with SAP on the label. The way we connect is via um, multiple different objects, okay? We can connect in not just to tables or the like, we can connect into all sorts of different ways. If we look down the left-hand side, the way we can read data, as you can see, is very varied. We can do the tables. Yes, we can get the granular level of data um, in a very safe, secure way um, brought into your platform. But also, as you'll see in a second, for the business user, and perhaps more useful, um, certainly starting out, is that we can run T-codes. So we can run T-codes external to SAP into directly into your, your platform of choice. Um, you can see the other ways we can connect different objects, if you like, things like being able to pull attachments from SAP, to um, run any type and extract data from any type of um, object within BW. And if you're on HANA, any type of HANA view. If you want deltas, then if you're using ODP, the SAP standard for, for, for delta mechanisms, we can hook into that and bring delta loads as well. That's the read capability, but as you can see, we have write capability as well. So on the other side of things, not only can we, can we pull out data from SAP, we can also write back to SAP. So using standard mechanisms such as BAPI, IDOC, writing into BW perhaps or OData, we can push data back into SAP systems. And just one note on the features here, a couple of notes on the features here. We have no restrictions. Once you purchase our licensing for the, for the various platforms, and you'll see how that, how that looks. There is no restriction on the number of SAP systems that you connect to, nor the number of um, workflows, number of executions that you run. So how does it all work? Well, there are two flavors. I'll show you the first flavor first, which is our, our cross connector for SAP, our XCS connector. 
this connects to the vast majority of um, um, the, the platforms that we'll be talking to, certainly the ones you can see on the right here, and, and more as well. So we'll look today at Power BI on 9, but beware, be aware that, um, that we can connect also into Snowflake, Tableau, as you can see, Data IQ, and that's at a desktop level for business users, but also if you're more interested in um, maybe more robust um, automated um, connectivity, then we also have a serv server solution that allows for that type of work. The way the solution works is that it sits as, a, as an integration platform either on your desktop or up on a server. But let's focus on desktop. So it sits on your desktop. It's a small piece of software that, that sits there and controls connectivity, it controls connections into and out of SAP, as you might imagine. And we'll show you how that looks very shortly. Those connections then can be consumed by different methodologies by those platforms in a very user-friendly and um, easy way. Um, and uh, obviously, therefore, the data can be extracted from SAP via the middleware into those platforms. What's nice is that, from within, as you'll see again, from within the platforms, we can control what happens in those connections. So it becomes a dynamic relationship. It's not just a push, push, push. We can control, say, from Power BI, that we want certain data to be pulled from SAP and that data gets called and the integration platform, XCS, controls all of that. So let's start, um, let's show you something, enough slides for a moment. Let's show you um, what it might look like um, in NIME and uh, just simply just running a, a transaction code. So here's NIME. Um, for those that aren't familiar with this, um, it, it's a um, an analytics platform with multiple nodes. We can build it in the canvas in the, in the center here, workflows that allow you to connect and manipulate your data. Um, others may be a, um, other sort of solutions of a similar ilk are maybe Tableau Prep or um, um, Alteryx, those same sort of platforms. Um, within the Nine platform, we can bring in our software and you can see at the bottom here, we have nodes um, which allow us to do various functions, the functions I've mentioned just now, to connect to different systems and different objects. And if I look in the read um, folder here, you can see that the various tools that we have available to us. Let's pull in um, a report tool. A report tool or a T-code tool does exactly what it says. It allows you to connect to a transaction code and pull data directly from SAP, obviously via that XCS console that's sitting in the, in, in the, the background in our, on our machine um, and bring it into Nine. And it's as simple as this. So if we double click here, then it opens the configuration for this particular node and I can then go off and configure. Now what happened there when I can say configure, I'm just jumping as you can probably see top left, it's quite small, but into the XCS console. So I can now create my connection. I can configure a connection. You can see this one is a, a, a T-code one. So it's either a T-code or maybe a program or a report name. Let's stick with T-code and I'm gonna use uh, the finance transaction FBL3N. When I search, that talks back to my SAP system. Um, you can see that I've by default picked my ECC system, but there are many systems that can be configured uh, which reflect all those different types of SAP systems that we've talked about. You can see immediately once it's talked to the to the um, the SAP system, it's recognized that the T code is is bona fide. It's found the report that sits behind it, and it says, "Hey, select a variant." These are the variants that are saved over on the SAP side, so I can pick one of these variants, and as you can see, it's allowed me to use that. I can actually see the values within that, that variant by just copying them across into the console. So you can see here that, um, for instance, we've got um, a, a range of um, posting dates. We have a range of GLs. Um, we've got a company code somewhere in there, although it's, I can't see it at the top of my head. There it is, 3000, a company code, okay? And you can maintain these. These are now sitting in the console. So if I didn't want 3000, I could change that to, 
2,000, 5,000, whatever it may be. So I can control this fully from within the console. But don't forget, that can be more dynamically controlled from upfront in the, um, in the platforms themselves. What's nice now is that um, we can design our output. Now, as you know, in SAP, sometimes the, um, the um, outputs can be a little more challenging. And so we go into this design wizard, which actually runs the T-code for us. So it's going to run the T-code with that, with that variant. Now, the output that you would see in, the, in your GUI um, looks like this. OK, um, you can see we've got a GL and company code. Um, it, uh, um, it sits outside the data. We have a sort of mini table that relates to that combination. And then if we come down, we've got some um, we've got some totals and then the same again and again. OK, so it's um, it's a nice output for for within the GUI, but obviously for analytics. It's a little messy, so you can imagine having to download that into Excel, um, play around with that as a, you know, as a business user. I'm sure many of you are already done um, trying to get, you know, it's great fun trying to get those uh, headers into the data. Well, this this tool actually does that all that for you. In fact, it's recognized what it wants you to do. It's suggesting what it wants you to do. You can see at the top here, it's already identified that there are three header fields. These are the pink ones. And it, what it's going to do is going to take those and create columns for them within the data set that's output. We can manipulate this, of course. Maybe I don't, I don't want the second one. I'm not bothered about the, um, the, uh, the, the text here. I just want the values. Okay? But it will create those for me in the, in, the, in the output. The header field here has also been identified. And the final thing to notice is it's ignoring a row. It's ignoring a row when this, the fourth character is an asterisk. OK, let's see what that does. Well, what it's doing is it identified those, those rows that are totals. Of course, for analytics, you don't need those rows. You, don't want, you just want the raw data you can consolidate later. So it notices there's an asterisk in the fourth character and automatically um, suggests that these should be removed. Now, you can override that, as you've seen, but that's no problem. At the moment, I'm happy with that, so I can just say, hey, preview the data. And now you can see we've got a nice, clean, nicely parsed data that has the GL and company code in the right columns. It's taken out all the extras in that, in that T-code output and presents the data in a way that is great for analytics. So I'm happy with that. Obviously, I can go backwards and forwards and play with this if I like. And and we're good to go. And if we preview, indeed, we can get a, an even better um, idea of what this looks like within the, within the console itself. So all of this is being done in the console. So we're preparing our, our connectivity, but in a very, as you can see, a very user-friendly way. There's no code here. There's no um, difficulty here. It's certainly something that a business user could use, pick up and use. I'm happy with that, so I'm just going to say save. And it's saving that into my console, not the data, but the, um, the metadata, the, the call, the connection itself. OK, once it's done that, I can now back out of here, say OK. And within this node, that configuration is saved. So when I run it, that makes a call back into my XCS console, it logs on, it runs the T code with that variant, applies all those changes, and way before I can even say finish that sentence, it's, it's in here. And as you can see, if I right click, here's my data within, within the node, ready to use in, um, in NIME. What's nice is that's the output of, the of this node, of course, but you'll notice that there's a there's an input anchor here. So what that means is that I can pass in data. So you, you saw, for instance, that that ran for, for the company code 3000. I could pass in a list of company codes and say, run this T code again and again for several company codes. Pass that in, and I can control what happens within the node. It's not hard coded. It's very dynamic. It would run for all those company codes, do all the work we've seen, consolidate the data and pass it out as a single block 
which could then be used downstream. And as you can imagine, you can just build your workflows from here. Okay, so let's step on. That was that was nine. That was nine. Let's just look um, at a, a different platform, Power BI. Okay, the principle is very similar. Okay, um, Power BI, if anything, is even more integrated or well integrated, as you'll see in a second. Um, we've said we can read from multiple sources. Again, we have XCS as our middle middleware. Our um, um, integration server, if you like, and we can consume those connections directly within a bespoke piece of code that sits within your Power BI platform. And this could be on desktop, Power BI server, absolutely any any version of Power BI you have. So again, quick demo. Let's uh, just skip into a Power BI, um, which I can't see for. I want to look in, that's the one I want. Thank you. Okay, so you'll recognize if you run Power BI, this is the, the desktop version, of course. Um, and first step is usually either to run something you've, you've created already or just to go get some data, okay? And obviously, there's different data types in here, um, as you can expect. When you have our software, then you can type DVW and you get these additional data sources. This one here, when we connect, connects, guess what, into that XCS um, middleware, in theory. <laughs> the curse of the. Let's try a new one. The curse of the demo, it never works first time, does it? Of course, it was working perfectly well just now. Let's try again. So if we um, we try and connect, is it going to come up for me? And behave. Yes, it is. That's better second time around. So you can see in here that I've connected now into that XCS. If I open the data sets, then I see all the data sets that I've already created. So various connections the data into SAP, okay? But it's very simple, again, to create a new one. So if I edit this, I come in, say, look, create a new data set. And if I just click on the refresh there, it's gonna jump me again into XCS, into that middleware. Now this time, I haven't stated which tool I was gonna use, so I get a selection. So there are lots of different tools that I can use from within this, um, within this window here. I'm just gonna do a simple table data read. Okay. Now, again, it's gonna be simple. Let's keep it simple. Let's look at the material master data on the Mara table. If you don't know the table, by the way, you can search for a table here and it gives you some, yeah, you can dig into the tables either by their description, by their name, by groupings of tables. But I know it, so I'm just gonna apply that. I know that's the table I'm looking for. That's talking to SAP now. It's gonna bring back the metadata of that table. So you can see, here's all the metadata. We can put technical names on, by the way, um, down the side here. So if you prefer technical names rather than text, you can add a key for those of the, you know, the German technical names. And uh, we just simply select the fields we want. Now that can be, as many, yeah, as many as you like, there's no limit, okay? Um, but what, what we do have here is the ability, obviously, rather than to have all the data from that table, to be very selective. So immediately we're being um, economic, let's say, okay? We can also be very precise about the data we want. So for instance, um, we can add a filter, and we can add a filter on absolutely any. I just right click there, add a blank filter, and you can see for material group, I can now go off and I can select, if I like, the material groups that I'm interested in, okay? So I can select from here and you get the usual operators, greater than, less than, you know, between. Um, you can even do a list of these, okay? So I know which one it is again though, because I'm gonna have finished products, okay? And um, 
I'm going to go across and you see this wizard takes you through so it's quite nice and easy to use. Bring out all my data. The preview won't bring it all out but it will bring a subset just so I can check that what I have is what I would like. Of course again we're getting Ah, that's anybody spot the deliberate mistake? <laughs> Just to show it's live. Material type, of course, is vert. <laughs> I'm sure you're all screaming at me in there. And if we preview this time, hopefully, we'll get some data back. So as you can see, as you're going along, you can build up you can make for, make up for mistakes. You can make sure that exactly the data you want is presented to you from within the console, ready to pass downstream into wherever you like. As we said, in this case, it's gonna be Power BI. I'm gonna save this now. Um, I'm gonna give it a name. So let's call it Mara um, Webinar. Okay, and save that. So that's saving again the configuration of that connection, not the data. We never store data, by the way. It's always held in memory. Um, and once we back out of this, it will be dropped. That's all good. If we back out now and I go to my data set, then once I refresh, I can see, hopefully, Mara webinar, there it is. And if I click on this now, you can see here's the data. And I can load that data in, of course. Okay, so I can I can load the data and then use it within my um, my Power BI. Now that's great. That's easy way of getting data into Power BI. What's even cooler, even more more interesting, is that we can we can do much more than that. So, for instance, if we look at this. Um, beautiful um, masterpiece of a, of a, a dashboard. Um, let's take that with a pinch of salt, but anyway, the, um, what we have here is, again, this, but expanded further, okay? So what I've done in here is I've created, I've created a, um, a Power Query. And what's nice about the way our, our connections work is that we're able to configure want and um, and again the curse strikes it's going to be one of those days I think um, let's just try this one and maybe we'll we'll have a better view of it this is a T code instead but you get the idea um, so you can see here that um, we have data for company code 2000 um, what we've done here is add a parameter so we can say, hey, edit parameters, and effectively we can run the run the T code from within Power BI. So this is now going to run this T code when I apply the changes. It's going to pass the data that I want, that filter, back into the console. The console will run the connection, but with the new filter. So I'm controlling entirely what I get back from SAP from Power BI. So effectively running a T code directly from Power BI. And when I look at the data now, I've got company code 3000 instead. My failed table one works exactly the same way. It enables you to pass data from Power BI into the, into the connections in XES and pull exactly the data you want. And that can even be a list of, um, a whole list of uh, company codes. It can be a dynamic um, pass through. So you can pass um, the output of one table call. Um, say you're working in finance, so you've got the header table. You can pass the data that you pulled from the header table as a filter for your line item table. 
So again, you're being very efficient and you're pulling exactly the data you want. And then you can do all the great stuff that you know about already in Power BI, join the data, make great presentations. And at any time, you can just come in here, right click and refresh the data. Okay. So one, one key call out about all our connectors, and that is, and that is that they never ever, as this slide shows, connect at the database layer. To be quite frank, that's a dangerous place to go. And you've got to, as a, as a user, if you are going at that level, using maybe connects like ODBC or, or the like, know what you're doing. As you all probably know, given you're on this call, SAP is the, is the central hub of your business. And quite rightly, your basis team, your SAP um, IT teams, protect that with their lives because it is the lifeblood of the business, okay? You don't want something going in, frankly, at the database layer. Because of that, as a paradigm, all our connectors connect in at the application layer, okay? This is exactly the same as the SAP GUI or Analysis for Office or all those other SAP tools. They connect in at the application layer. You'll know if you use the SAP GUI or the like, that you need a username and password, or single sign-on, of course. All our tools require that too. You haven't seen it yet. On the next one, I'll show you in all tricks exactly where that sits. We're logging on. We're logging on as a user who has authorizations and security within that SAP system. All our tools respect that. So if you can't, if you're not supposed to be running that T code in finance, you won't be able to run it elsewhere. Equally, any table data any other types of data within SAP, it's totally secure. The extra you get is that because you're coming in on the application layer, any SAP safety belts that have been applied, and you might have seen them if you've ever tried to extract a very large T code or um, a large um, volume of data from say SE16, the table browser, that at some point, sometimes you may hit a limit. It's either a time limit or a, a volume limit of data and the SAP system politely says, sorry, no, I'm closing you down there. You're using too much resource. Um, I'm going to stop that session. We absolutely respect that. So the bottom line here is we can do no harm. We're absolutely secure. We're using SAP authorizations. And we totally respect those safety belts. By the way, it doesn't mean that you can't pull huge amounts of data out of your SAP system, it's just done in a very safe and secure way. I'll show you how that happens very shortly. Okay, so let's switch to another platform, Alteryx, okay? Um, Alteryx, again, is a data wrangling platform. Um, here's how, to, here's how to, um, into, to extract data from Alteryx into AWS. So I'm going to start with this flow here. This is the Alteryx designer, by the way. Um, you can see that in this flow, and this is where, by the way, it, it, it's a little bit more visible in Alteryx, um, in that um, Alteryx is the, the exception to the rule, if you like. It doesn't use and have a separate XES. If you like, the XES is inbuilt within Alteryx. Okay? So same principle, exactly the same principle, but slightly diff different technical layout. What that means is I can show you exactly um, very easily where, you, where your connectivity is and where your password is stored. So you, it's stored within the, within the software itself. Of course, it's encrypted. It's absolutely, in fact, it's double encrypted for, for security. But you can see again that you can choose whichever SAP system you're interested in. You enter your username and password. As we said, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's um, uh, single sign-on can be used as well. And we can just ping. And we say ping, what we're doing is just checking, just to like in the XES, that our connectivity is good. It is. And what that means is that this credential manager, if you like, the SAP logon tool, can now control which other tools 
get that access. As you can see, there are two tools in here that do. You can just see the faint lines. Then one of them is um, a table tool. Looks very similar, but it's embedded within, within um, Alteryx here, very similar to XES. We can be very precise about what we're outputting in terms of the columns. We can, again, filter on any, any level. Once we've applied our filter, then the data that comes out will be our BKPF data. So that's the headers in our, in our um, uh, general ledger. Now, as with many tables within SAP, um, they are relational. So you'll have generally a header table, and then that controls one or more segment or line item tables. The line item table or the main line item table for finance postings is this table here, BSEG. Okay. Now, what's really nice here is that we're controlling it. And you can see in between the two, we've taken the data from the header, created a filter from that data, and we're going to pass that filter downstream into the line item. So we're only getting the data that we want that we've prescribed in the header table. Once we're in there, we can use the Alteryx tools to join, as in other platforms like Nine and Power BI. And then we can pass that downstream. Now, there's one last connection here. The Alteryx tools, there's, as you can see here, one of the Alteryx tools, this tool allows us to connect to AWS and it creates an S3 bucket. Okay. So you can see, or an object within S3 bucket. So we can see here that we have um, our um, bucket. We can actually just check, you know, and this is talking back to AWS. Here's my bucket. I can select it if I want. Um, I can give this a name. Um, let's just give it a name. So let's call it level up seven or something. Um, so this is the object it's going to create. And all I need to do now is pass it some data. And so when I run this, so when I run this, it's logging me on. It's getting the header data that I'm interested in. Once it has that header data, it's going to pass it and create filters filters that the segment or the line item table will understand. By the way, you may, note, may notice here it's breaking those calls down. So remember I said that we can pull very large data sets. It's not so large in this case, but we're talking some of our customers pulling hundreds of millions of rows of data using exactly a, a workflow exactly like this one because we can break down those calls. We don't do one huge giant call. We break them down. We chunk it up. And there are mechanisms within our tools, within all our tools, to split those calls. That, of course, keeps us below those safety belts. It means that we're not troubling the SAP system, but we are getting the data we want in a very, very efficient way. You can see now that that's passed over to AWS. And um, hopefully, if I skip across to my AWS bucket here, then there we go, SAP Table Data Demo 007. Um, and so, you know, we have that data um, in AWS for us. It doesn't have to be table data, of course. Um, we, can, uh, we can use multiple kinds of, uh, of data. Here's the table one, but we can add T codes, of course, here, exactly the same as we would in NIME or elsewhere. Um, from BW, we have lots of options. Actually, we can we can pull query data across, of course, or data maybe from a cube or info object. But equally, if we want some text, we could go use the text in BW, combine them with data sets from elsewhere. Um, we can also pull data in hierarchies. So, as you probably know, BW is good for holding hierarchies and and organizing the data in such a way. We can extract those hierarchies in a flat form and pass those downstream, in this case, as you can see again, into AWS. Finally, just to reiterate, any type of HANA view that you have, we can connect into and uh, manipulate to S3 or elsewhere. So hopefully I've been building light bulbs or giving you ideas. Um, certainly, the history of our company in terms of our software 
um, and connectivity has gone on a on a on a on a, on a path uh, which started as at the top here with with analytics without any shadow of a doubt. So we really focused on on analytics because we saw that that was the, the the use case that was most prevalent. Getting the data out of SAP in a very efficient, user friendly way, and then passing it into one of those platforms, maybe Alteryx, Nine, um, elsewhere. Okay. It can then be passed on maybe into flow on into a dashboard. It may be a Power BI dashboard, Tableau, and again, any any place um, we can find a route to efficiently move your data from SAP out, and as you've seen, in a very business friendly way. So analytics by far was our first and and biggest um, um, object. However, we've seen over the years. Um, Different use cases emerge as our, as our customers have, have taken our product and then taken it beyond even our even our imaginings. Um, with the invent of being able to write back into SAP with some of our tools, then as you can imagine, you can start to look at end-to-end -end process automation. And certainly with the server versions of uh, NIME, Alteryx, or um, um, our own tools, we can automate that. So think, things like posting journals become an automated process rather than a bind at month end. That obviously is great because it, it releases manpower, but also it's incredibly quicker and more precise, as you can imagine. Okay. Equally, we, we've seen uh, customers updating, say, material master, customer master, master data, improving the quality of that master data using an automated process. So we extract data, say the customer master data from SAP. Um, one use case um, that was, was being trialed was to then to take um, maybe uh, from the customer's um, address data, take the address and where it's not very well formed sometimes, where it's been input incorrectly or partially to push that up to maybe an AI engine and get it to um, extend and correct those um, address fields, standardize them, bring them back into the platform, NIME, Alteryx, wherever it may be, and then from there, push back into SAP and improve that data set. So you can imagine those end-to-end -end processes, there are thousands of them. I'm sure there are light bulbs going off everywhere. Um, and the, the third, Part of our, our little uh, Venn diagram here, the data migration is something as well that we're seeing great strides coming on. Uh, we're seeing um, with our with our colleagues at Demargo, um, um, superb successes um, ex migrating data from, um, for instance, from ECC uh, to the S for HANA platform. And of course, there's a there's a little bit of a time pressure piece on that. Well, if you want to um, to improve that that situation, you can do nothing worse than um, nothing better even than than move to um, our tools together with one of the platforms. In this case, um, it was Alteryx, but it could be others, um, and accelerate that process. But it doesn't only accelerate it; it de-risks it because it makes it so visible for everybody. It makes it consistent. It means that you can do deltas to keep the lights on when you've got both systems running. Um, really great possibilities there, and um, on that, I would I would uh, encourage you to come to another of our webinars um, next week, which we'll pub publicise um, on our on our website and elsewhere. On the end to end, I'd like to show you an example in a second. Um, so this is um, an example of uh, where we can uh, um, use. The, uh, the power of these platforms, these new platforms with their connectivity, with their versatility to replace a manual task, a uh, very arduous manual task at that, um, with a flow that is pretty much automatic, okay? So the situation here, imagine, you know, we've got um, invoices coming in from vendors. Um, the situation is that in, in your business, you've got them manually posted, okay? Um, a document gets attached, which is the PDF of the uh, the invoice itself. Um, that gets pushed, obviously, manually into SAP via the GUI. Now, at that point, all is good. That's great until the auditors come in. Now, when the auditors come in, they want to 
take a random sample of these um, invoices and check for accuracy. So what we can do is, as you see in Alteryx, but it could be elsewhere, we can create a workflow that does that work for us. We can identify randomly or however we choose which postings we're interested in. And the workflow has two, two arms. The upper arm takes those postings and says, hey, is there a PDF of my invoice sitting within SAP? If there is, let's extract it. We can use, we can use technology then to read that PDF, to extract the data from it. At the same time, the bottom arm can run into SAP, go get the actual postings that were made in on the SAP side, pull that data back, and then, of course, it's a simple thing to reconcile that and then output the results and create actions, okay? So let's take a look at that within, um, within Alteryx. So here's that flow, okay? Um, don't be put off, there are a few bits and pieces here, but it basically does what we said. We said that we want to identify the list of documents. I've picked a few here, just three, okay? Uh, for a particular T, a T particular T code posting, so it posted with FB60 um, for this company code, okay? Now, what that will do, and I'm just gonna start it running now, and then we'll, I'll talk to it. What that will do is, it will um, it will go and get for me those headers from BKPF. This is exactly the same as you've just seen, by the way. So it gets the header values, and on the bottom row, it retrieves the line items that were posted and passes them on. It actually enhances them a little bit, does a little bit more than I mentioned. It puts some vendor details in, in terms of their text. So you can always enhance your data. You can always improve by bringing even more SAP data into this, or maybe data from other sources, of course. The top row, what it's doing is it's saying, okay, for those three documents, were there any PDFs attached to them? Were there any invoices attached in there? Where it finds them, it then goes off and runs this little macro here. Now, if we jump inside the macro, it looks like this. Okay, so this is what's happened. The macro basically runs, it's just a subroutine, which runs again and again for each of the postings. So in this case, it's three. It could be 300, it could be 3,000, it doesn't matter. It just runs again and again. There are a few bits, bits and pieces here, but not too complicated. The first one is one of our tools, one of DVW's tools, which is, hey, go get, the, go get that document, bring it back. And then in Alteryx, it converts it back into something sensible that's readable. What we also then have are these tools here. These are called um, computer vision tools. So they're OCR tools. They're able with AI to examine a PDF and extract the data from it, okay? So we've extracted the PDF, but now we've got the data that sits on top of it. And if we come back to the flow, you can see in here an example of the type of data it's picked by the way, there are only two documents posted. I'll talk about that in a minute. So that from the two attachments, it's pulled out the line items for me. So now I've got the data and I've got the postings within SAP. I can compare them. And the last section here just does that reconciliation. Now you can do it using standard Alteryx tools here. Um, of course, this could, as I said, could be NIME, it could be Power BI. We could do the same work there. Um, equally though, we've got here a reconciliation tool. This is an, a DVW reconciliation tool, and that enables you to, to check row by row, field by field, that these two data sets match. The upshot is that you can get your results, um, and you can see that, hey, one of these um, documents, number three, totally reconciled, always good. For the second document, you can see there were some problems. It noticed that the vendor didn't match. So where it should have been in Munich, it was a, a Hamburg vendor. So the vendor was there, incorrect there. At the field by field record, it's checking 
literally field by field, as you can see. And we can see that, look, it's picked up that the payment terms in that, that document weren't right. They should have been uh, due on receipt, not 30 days. And even the, the date, the invoice date was incorrect. OK. The last one, by the way, didn't have any, um, didn't have an attachment. So that's a different error entirely, of course. But what we get here is now outputs that we can act on. So we could send an email, we could post to a dashboard if we wanted to, write to file, whatever it is that's necessary, and get an action to happen. So you can see how these end-to-end -end processes are really can be accelerated, streamlined, made very visible, but in a simple workflow like this can be um, uh, built out without any real deep technical knowledge, but just with um, a will to be inventive and to use the tools that are available in Alteryx here, in NIME, in Power BI, or wherever, wherever that might be. OK, well, that's, that's it for today. Um, thank you for joining. Thanks for DeMargo for supporting our, um, our webinar today. Um, hopefully, um, the, the, the slow start <laughs> didn't put you off, um, but that you did get lots of, um, lots of uh, information, um, lots of ideas, I hope, of how you can use our tools DBW, from, DBW, from DBW Analytics together with um, the, the services and the, the support from our partners like DeMargo to really transform your business and your, the way you think about um, analytics, but also processes from end to end. And you don't have to be a technician to do it. Thanks for your attention. And I'll stop the webinar there. Thank you.